Good morning all, it's post bag time and I thought we'd start with this one which says one time silencer. I think it's two times silencer. So inside we have this little bundle of bits, uh, silencer uh, for the exhaust on the diesel air heater, a silencer for the air intake and a couple of Jubilee clips. Yeah, so here's the exhaust silencer. Oh, it has a little L bracket. Um, so I don't know, there must be some baffles in there. They say this is stainless steel. How long it lasts outside? Of course, we won't be able to see through there, will we? Oh, you can vaguely see a bit of light through there. But yeah, it must take the exhaust down a path to kind of try and take the noise out of it a little bit. So that will be interesting. Uh, a couple of Jubilee clips. I don't quite know why they've sent these screws. Um, these are the ones that have the, the tip, it acts like a bit of a drill bit. Um, then it sort of enters the wood or metal or whatever, and then you can screw it the rest of the way. Quite nice. Now this is also a silencer. I thought initially that this was an air filter. Oh, that's really interesting. This one's different to my other one. Um, but you can see that it's clearly not an air filter because the, the filtery stuff, the foam, there's some white foam in there, you can see it there. Um, it just sits around the outside. There's a gaping hole right through. So you screw that into the flexible pipe um, that's on the air intake side. And then there's this cover, but it's a bit different to the other one. Oh yeah, it is quite different. Yeah, my other one. Yeah, so there's a sort of, there's a, there's a path through which the air goes to try and silence it. The other one on mine had sort of um, a coarse filter, some just some holes on the end. So that I suppose large insects can't be sucked into the uh, combustion chamber. But yeah, this is essentially a silencer for the air intake side. So yeah, I found uh, several sellers selling this uh, exhaust silencer for around $10. And then I found this one selling all these bits for $10. So I thought I'd go for this one. Let's take a look at this one on eBay. So here's the item on eBay and it says stainless steel exhaust silencer plus 25 millimeter filter and I don't think it is a filter I think it's a, an air intake silencer for air diesel heater car muffler so $10.75 for all this stuff and in fact you get a bit more don't you because you get those two screws uh $1.99 shipping and these came from Mahi store 2009 shall we see if these silencers work I'm going to speak into them um, near the camera's microphone and we'll see what effect they have. Let's try the uh, air intake silencer first. So here's my normal voice and here's me speaking through the air intake silencer. I don't think it does a huge amount but it does something. Right that's that one. Uh, let's try the exhaust silencer. So here's my normal voice and here's me speaking into the exhaust silencer. I must admit that does seem to work very well indeed. So yeah, I'll uh, take those outside. Well, I won't take this outside because I've already got the air intake silent. So this is just, well, this was really just to show how it works. It's slightly different to my other one. Perhaps I'll swap them over and show the other one one day. Right, let's move on to some electronic stuff now. And uh, this is diode, diode and diode. Where's my knife? Right, let's tackle knife gate head on. Uh, so that goes in there, doesn't it? That's how it's meant to work. Let's do it with one of these. Let's try and get it to, I mean, it's pathetic, isn't it? It's not going to work, is it? Let's try and get it to snap along the, oh, well, it's kind of snapped. It hasn't done that very much good. Uh, let's have another go. I'll try and angle this onto here. Oh, it's a useless thing. Oh, well, I just did it again um, between my fingers like that and the pliers and it worked rather well. My knife is sharp once again. Right, let's try it. Oh, 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 yes. Very nice. Still not a brilliant cut, is it? But anyway, these are surface mount uh, devices. They're not diodes. Let's see what they are. Well, they've been marked up. So these are 10 mega ohm resistors. Now they're for my little, um, Oh, what are they? They're the MOSFET driver boards that I had made by JLC PCB recently. So that's good. And we have green and we have red surface mount LEDs. And these are 0805 size. 
So yes, and I've actually decided that I'm going to put one red and one green, green on the sort of on side and red on the off side of my little MOSFET driver board so that you can see them as they change from red to green. You can see whether they're mostly on or mostly off. It doesn't make any sense to have the same color LED on either side because you can't see whether they're on or whether they're off. Now these are also going to come in handy for another thing which I'm going to be building soon and it's inside this envelope. Someone watching this video should recognize this. Yeah, this is coming soon. So just checking these 10 meg resistors. Yes, they are 106. So that would be brown, black, blue in old money, which I seem to remember is 10 meg. And these are the LEDs. Oh, and they really are very tiny, aren't they? That's going to be fun soldering those on. Not. So the 100 pieces 0805 red LED lamp bead, uh, $1.35 for those 100 pieces, free shipping, Shengming Electronics. And 100 pieces 0805 green LED lamp beads, uh, $1.35 Shengming Electronics. And 100 pieces 0805 SMD resistor, 10 meg, 5%. Uh, oh, 5% is not very good, is it? But then again um 10 meg it hardly matters does it one dollar 25 now i accept that i'm probably paying over the odds for these things by buying them in hundreds but i don't need three thousand leds and i don't need three thousand resistors so i'm happy to pay a little bit more uh free shipping shengming electronics right now this one which i appear to have pulled the pull strip on but i don't think i've actually opened it because i don't remember uh seeing this item Let's have a look. And it's two rechargeable batteries, high voltage, 1.6 volts. Um, yeah, so these are double A's. I really don't like triple A's. And uh, the idea of these was to sort of mix and match them with nickel metal hydride. These are nickel zinc, Nizens. Um, to slightly pep up the voltage specifically for that thermal imaging camera that I've got which just very quickly after you put freshly charged um, nickel metal hydrides in it just says no power and shuts off I thought if I put a couple of nickel zincs in there and a couple of uh, nickel metal hydrides it wouldn't do that I don't think it could take four nickel zincs well it might do um, but anyway I just bought two to see what they're like. Now I do believe I've got a charger for these somewhere. I think it wants um oh I can't remember something like an MC3000 and I was um, rummaging through this storage unit the other day and I saw on the front of the box that it does nickel zinc so I can charge these with that but I've been looking at the charge profile for these and it looks like it's really simple. You just charge them at a constant current wait till they get to 1.9 volts and then stop. So yeah, the problem was this thing. This is the Zintest HTO2 and I'll switch it on. Is that the on, is that the on button? I think that's the on button and it will boot up and then very quickly and it has four inner loops in it. Oh, and it's just immediately said low power and shut down again. So let's take two of the inner loops out and um, oh, they look a bit tricky to get out. I'll just fight with that off camera. Now, of course, I don't know what the um, the retention sort of uh, parameters are for nickel zinc. Do they retain charge for any length of time? Like the inner loops, which retain charge for sort of pretty much forever. Um, this bridging piece across here is obviously the midpoint of the cells. So that should give it enough um, voltage that the power or voltage measuring circuit in here should be relatively happy that these batteries are fully charged. And yeah, there it is. There's my hand in thermal imaging. Okay, so it says it's low, but can I charge these things just from a bench power supply? It'd be quite fun to try, wouldn't it? Now this is interesting. They're specified in milliwatt hours, not milliamp hours. Um, all the nickel metal hydrides I've ever seen 
say milliamp hours where's the thing for that yeah there we are minimum 1900 milliamp hours these are milliwatt hours and at 1.6 volts that's going to give um, a much lower milliamp hour rating so what would that be uh, so on the barbulator i suppose it would be 2500 uh, uh, divided by 1.6 is mm, they're only about 1500 milliamp hours apparently and if you're interested in the off-camera solution for getting these batteries out lolly sticks although i think these are designed for marking plants or something like that uh so <laughs> that won't go in there actually i didn't use lolly sticks i'm totally lying to you but uh, they're sort of less aggressive than a screwdriver yeah that does kind of come out i just thought that this was really the only way short of getting in here and changing the firmware to sort of solve this problem of um the energy management system expecting alkalines but i don't want to use alkalines so let's give this a try um here's one of these aa battery holders with the little wing clip thing snapped off because they're just so annoying uh so i want to connect that into the output of this Yes, I can current limit this, can't I? And then set the uh, voltage limit to 1.9 volts. Yeah, let's do that. 12.7, uh, no, that's a teeny tiny bit too high. So let's go for 1.9. I read somewhere was the uh, voltage you should take. This. Oh, that's a bit low. You should take this thing up to. And uh, so that's that and the current yeah half an amp would be about right so let's give that a try now i think we decided that this thing doesn't mind having voltage back feed into it it better not otherwise <laughs> certainly going to get a bit cross now isn't it uh okay so let's switch it on oh and it's gone straight to 1.9 so maybe these are fully charged uh i mean it's it's on constant voltage so is there any current being drawn well uh 75 milliamps yes actually um and that's falling as you'd expect so yeah these are fully charged so i don't need to charge them and i wonder how long their retention is that's the one thing i didn't look up how good a nickel zinc uh how many years will they retain their full charge but that one's certainly charged let's try the other one all right let's lob this one in and that's at 100 uh, milliamps well that's going up so this one might be a little less voltage less voltage oh come on this stupid thing with its bouncy switch uh no that's at 1.9 and the current is if i can get to it well that's at 140 oh oh that's really horrible isn't it nasty connections on here I think um yes and that's dropping so again that's a fully charged cell right maybe i'll just leave them in here for a bit switch this thing on and just leave it on um and attempt to discharge these a bit and then have another go, another go at charging these nickel zinc cells later but uh yeah they certainly do work Have we got any warmth on the um charger yeah a little bit right what's the voltage of these cells on load uh let's just try that if i can wedge these not very easily right 1.56 so yeah roughly it's a little bit under its nominal voltage there's probably quite a lot of current drain on this um thermal imaging camera but yeah 1.567 and this is well it's still saying low so maybe this thing's only going to be happy if it has four of these uh nickel zinc 1.6 volt cells put in and so on ebay these are two times aa 1.6 volts 2500 ah now they're saying milliamp hours and that's not true they're milliwatt hours that's actually marked on the cells nickel zinc rechargeable batteries uh four dollars 45 there's a shipping charge of two dollars 50 and these came from easy b2b do you know i think this might work better if i had like three of these nickel zincs and one Eneloop. but then would that breach my 
total dislike of things that take three cells. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know. Oh, I must show you something. Um, this is my Velman oscilloscope, uh, black and white or monochrome LCD. I haven't used it for ages, but I sort of fell over it the other day. And uh, I used to use this for um, doing the charge controller out in the garden because it's battery powered and it's very easy to read the monochrome LCD uh, under direct sunlight. Now this thing takes five AAs. Is that good or is that bad? But uh, this thing's still on, it's showing a sort of uh, mid-scale amount of power left in the cells, so I think that's a result. Shall we have one more? Shall we open this one? See what's in here? Oh, lots of single-use plastic. Yes, I do feel guilty. But I'm not entirely sure what to do about it. Uh, even more single-use plastic. And of course the item itself is a plastic of some sort. It's heat shrink. Um, I can't remember the diameter of that. Um, it might be half an inch. But this is for my PWM5 solar charge controller. Not that it needs it because it seems to be fine out in the rain. So out in the work area, um, there's the diesel heater. And you probably noticed from previous videos, my sort of twin wall polycarb. Uh, panel inserts in the frame. Oh, and my house brick, which I drilled a hole through, through which the exhaust goes so that it can't uh, char the timber. It, it does get very close to this piece of wood here, but there's no signs of it um, browning, so I think that's fine. And uh, you'll notice that I've got these top pieces now blocked in, and also this uh, profile foam, which you can buy at great expense. I think it's about 10p a hump um, so yeah that's all starting to get sealed in but uh, what I came out for is to look at the charge controller there it is you can just about see uh, it's modulating it's got its blue light on it's still working fine and from the other side uh, you can see how the exhaust pipe pokes out through that hole in that house brick and let's have a close-up of the charge controller there it is, modulating away. It's a reasonably bright day today, so the battery's nicely uh, full of charge. But that thing's sitting there entirely happy, just with its UV glue conformal coating. Let's uh, just twist it around a little bit. Yeah, it seems to be a very good uh, waterproof seal. And uh, here's a rogues gallery of old PWM5s, all of which have failed and taken on uh, moisture inside. So, I mean, of course, they're completely trashed. Um, yeah, I mean, if I'd conformally coated those on the inside, then actually that moisture getting into the housing really shouldn't have caused a problem, I don't think. So, I don't think I'll be using this um, heat shrink on that first PWM5. But what I might do is I might put it on the next one I make and seal the ends up with hot glue um, just to see whether um, it makes any difference. It probably look a bit prettier. Um, but the one that doesn't have any casing effectively just seems to be surviving for the moment okay. Right, so uh, you can see from my purchase history here, this is the item that I bought. Um, I think it's a meter of that stuff for $3.28. I don't think there was any shipping. Um, it was from this seller for hot season, but you can see there's no link here anymore, so I can't go to the item. I'll try and find someone else selling this, or I'll have a look through for hot season, to see if they're still selling it, but on a different uh, number. They do various sizes, one and a half, two and a half, three, five, six, 10, 13, 20, 25, 50. Um, I got a feeling this is 13 diameter but I can't remember. So the flat size is about 22 mil. As for diameter, well it's about the diameter of an AA cell. What's that? Um, yeah that's about 13 I guess. And so these are today's post bag items. Now big thanks as usual to my sponsor 
JLC PCB. Um, you get 10 PCBs for $2. And they're now doing a 24 hour uh, manufacturing turnaround. I think that used to be 48 hours. Here are my uh, the last PCBs I had made. These are for my uh, MOSFET driver. I had these done on a very nice red printed circuit board. And a big thanks also to my Patreon supporters. Um, if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, you can click this link here. Another couple of videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff. And if you're not subscribed to my channel and would like to be, you can click this link here. Cheerio!